All right, are we ready? Christina, yep, you should ready? be all set. Okay, all right. Um, hi, my name is Tracy. I am the owner of Quill Street Designs. I live outside of Houston. So today we had like, a, hi, today we had like a 74, 75 degree weather. So um, a little warm, you know, for the day. But uh, so who's going to be painting? Are you painting? Okay, nod your head. Are you painting? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Do you like Do you like snowmen? I love snowmen. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to uh, move my camera down to show my desk, and then we'll work on our snowmen. Okay. So let's see. Maybe. need just to fall down it works how come everything works when you're when you're practicing everything works and when you're getting ready it it doesn't okay can you see my desk yes okay all right now the tools that i'm going to use in your packet you should have had a little piece of sandpaper and then so we have a little piece of sandpaper we've got our brushes i see you've got yours out I'm also going to, we're going to work on some techniques. So I also have a toothpick. We're going to use a toothpick to make some of our little dots. And then I also have a Q-tip that we're going to use as well, along with our brushes. And we've got our wood glue. This one is my favorite. It's by Tight Bond, and it's a translucent glue, so you don't have white globs everywhere. And our colors, we're going to need some white. We'll need some white. We'll need some orange for his carrot nose. We're going to need some black for his hat. Uh, if you could want to, you could use some brown for his arms since they usually are made out of sticks. We've got some green for our trees. We've got red for our heart and our holly berries and then i'm going to use some gray for an accent color on my uh snow drift so let me get our let me scoot this over so we can get our fella in here there he is so here's the snowman and his his buddy so these are snow pals so we get the big snowman and the little snowman, and that's what we're gonna, actually going to paint this this evening. Okay? okay. So do you have all your supplies? You ready? Yep. All right. So you should have had in your kit the big round stand. Yep. Yep. So I made it a little bit thicker, so it was a little chunkier. So that he needs to be painted white because, of course, the snowman's standing in snow. And so he needs to be painted. Then, uh, but you can paint him last when, when we're through. Cause let's get over here and get ready to paint snowmen, okay? Cause that's just that's just a snow drift, so we don't need that right now. All right, now remember the piece of sandpaper that we had. Now I like to just do a quick little sand over because what happens is. I put some protective tape on the wood before I cut it and this so that it doesn't have these burn marks on the front and when I lift that tape up sometimes the fibers of the wood come up as well so I like to take my little piece of sandpaper and just knock some of those fibers back down okay so we're just going to give him a quick little sand Move some of it out, and I'm gonna stand my little one too. This would be our little snowman. Gotta look like that. I'm not gonna sand my trees because if there are some fibers popping up, 
I want it. I want to have that texture on my tree. So I'm not going to sand my trees, but if you want smooth trees, you can of course sand them. But I like to just uh, sand my snowman or my snowman or snow people or whatever we're going to call them. All right, you got your quick sand and ready to paint your snowman? Yep. All right, so. I paint out of the lids of my paint. Oh, another thing that I like to have is a little uh, paper plate because I can, if I want it, when, I, when we go to make some, uh, when you use like our Q-tips, are our paintbrush ends of our paintbrushes I can practice a little bit on that little paper plate okay. but a paper towel will work as well if you don't have one handy okay. okay so when I'm painting a big surface when I'm painting a big surface I like to have just a little bit wider brush and so now remember when we paint him his arms are either going to be brown if you want to be the brown of sticks or since I didn't bring brown with me mine are going to be black like they are here and then we're going to paint his hat black here too so the only thing we're going to paint white is our snowman now when you get ready up here at the top it does not have to be perfect we're like a perfect line because we're going to have the top of our uh, the brim of our hat here but you do want to make a a nice straight line here where his the branches are coming out for his arms okay, okay. So. so let's paint our snowman real quick so we need him so we can finish now if you look on the side of your snowman of the cut you can see where the laser has actually burnt the wood. That's how it cuts. It's just a line of fire, a pinpoint line of fire goes through and cuts the wood. I used, I like to keep this to show this, but if you don't, you can of course paint the side if you want to. It takes a lot longer to do that. It gets a little messy. But if you decide you want to keep this burnt, the burnt look, and if you do get a little paint on it, you can take your sandpaper and mark it off. Or you could be like, oh, that's just an artistic touch that I've added to it. So, you know, because you made it. You can do whatever you want to with it. Yep. So the thing about paint and wood is that paint can be painted over. So if you mess up, you can just paint over it. You can sand it off if you want to. So don't ever be afraid to paint. This paint is if you're painting your wall in your bedroom or if you're painting the snowman, paint is just paint. And it can be taken off. It can be sanded off or it can be painted over. So are you gonna make lines on both of the side of his arms? I am going to, when I come down here, see, I'm going to make this little line here, like I did over here. I'm going to make this little line, and then I'm going to come back with my black. So it looks like that black is poking out of his side. That tree branch is poking out of his side. And if your line's not perfect, we can make it perfect when we paint the black. Remember when we get up here to his hat, we could come up a little bit because that line doesn't have to be perfect because he's got a little cover up. Now the wood that you're painting on is, is breathing. It's alive. It's a piece of wood. So when you paint, sometimes that wood it soaks up your paint 
So depending on the quality of paint that you're using, you might have to do two coats. And that's up to you. That's up to you the way that you want it to look. But you won't really know till it completely dries. Are you painting with acrylic paint? Um, no. What kind of paint are you painting with? Washable paint. Okay, we'll see how it works. Don't let it rain on him. Okay. When I'm trying to keep my sides clean over here, that my sides clean, I find if I take my paintbrush, if I'm trying to keep these clean, the laser mark on here, if I actually take my paintbrush and go straight off, I won't get as much paint on this side. See, I'm going straight off. I'm not trying to paint sideways on here. I'm taking it straight off. Okay. After we get our, since we got our white paint out, let's go ahead and paint our little, our little snowman too. Okay. And we're gonna paint the same way. All of him's gonna be white. And watch again how I'm taking my paintbrush and I'm going straight off. Okay. And that should put less on the sides. And usually I paint I paint flat on the table instead of holding it. All right. Have you ever painted with a toothpick? No. Well, we're going to paint with a toothpick today. Have you ever painted with a Q-tip? No. Uh-huh. Do you know you can paint with bubble wrap? Yeah. Yeah, you can paint. Just paint with a potato. No. I'm, I'm pretty partial to painting with my fingers. And then this piece is what is going to be our snow drift down here. The one that's got the tab on the bottom because it's going to sit into the stand. See how this one has a little tab on the bottom? So, and this one is white as well. We don't get to make... the one that like goes on? Let me see. Put, hold it back up because I can't see you. Yeah, that's your snow drift. Okay. Yes. Does it? Let me see it again. Let me see the front, the cleanest side. Okay. Flip it back over the other way. Is there a piece of tape on that? No. There's nothing. There's nothing on top of it. No. Feel on there and see if you can pull something up. No. Okay. We, we don't get to make snowmen here. I'm old. I mean, I, I, I'm old. And once in my life, twice in my life, have I been able to build a snowman. Yeah, we just got snow the other day, but we didn't, like, there wasn't enough to make a snowman, though. Oh, you still got time, huh? Yeah. Do you get most of your snow in January and February? Uh, no. When do you get most of your snow? December. All right, so we got our snow drift painted white. We have our two snowmen, and I think we need to paint our top of our. Okay, do you see this little piece? It would yeah. be the fur around his ho ho hat. Santa hat. Is now, this for the one? yes, this is for the little one. Now, 
what what you could do with this one a painting ta what is making noise over here um what you could do a painting technique on this one is to take your paintbrush and instead of painting smoothly like we were for the snowman oh. we're just gonna daub it so it's gonna look like it has texture because make it look like it's fur okay okay so we're just gonna we don't want it to be smooth we want it to look like a it's fuzzy. So now it's to the smooth. Can I use a paper towel to do that too? Do what? Can I use a paper towel to do that too? Yes. Yes, you could put uh you could put some of your paint on and then you can start lifting up off with your paper uh your paper towel. So, I don't know how you can see, but here's our smooth, here's our smooth snowman. And then here, let's see if we got it. We've got something that has a little more texture. Can you see the difference? Yeah. Has a little bit of texture to it. And then there's one little bitty circle, and that's the pom-pom. So, we're going to want, do you know what? I'm going to try this on my, with my pom-pom. I'm going to take my Q-tip. Because that Q-tip is going to pull up, and I'm going to make it fluffier. Did somebody ring get you a Q-tip? Um, my mom's bringing it down right now. Okay. Yeah. And then you can experiment because that it'll actually draw off of it. So when you dab on the the paint with the Q-tip. And you apply and you lift, it makes it look a little different. Yeah, I have it right now. Okay. And you try it and see if you see what I'm talking about, how you could got, you've got more lift. Because the paint is sticking to the Q-tip and to your piece of wood. So we're wanting it to have a little texture to it. Were you able to make it work? Yeah. Okay. All right, so... What do we got next? You ready to do his uh, arms and his hat? Okay, well, let's do his arms and his hat. And right now we're just doing all of our base painting. So then we can get in and put in uh, some of the snow drifts, some dots, paint with that toothpick. So what we're going to paint are the arms on the big snowman. Okay. We're going to paint. These are the arms. See the little pieces? These are the arms for the uh, little snowman. Okay, I have them right here. See them? Okay. And then the big circles we will paint because those will be his uh, uh, buttons. So, the buttons down his front. Oh. Like the coal. And we're going to go oh. back in and do his eyes and stuff later. But let's just get these. Because these are the pieces we'll glue. So we want them to be drying. And then we can go back and. Okay, I found all three of them. Okay. All right, so we got our little hands going on. Buttons. Now, again, this is your snowman. So, if you want his buttons to be pink and to be a lady wearing a top hat, you are more than welcome to paint anything you want pink. He could have a pink hat. Because this is yours. Purple hat? Yep. You sure could. Uh, he would be styling. He would be like the only snowman in town with a purple hat. Okay. But I see 
think I might do for the buttons is just like brown. Okay. Mine's just a plain old snowman. We're going to give you some pizzazz. Do you like the paint? Yeah. Do you find it soothing? Yeah, I actually, well, today is my birthday, and I actually got a whole bunch of art supplies today. Oh, well, happy birthday. Thank you. Is that what you wanted, some uh, art supplies? Yeah, I needed some more. Oh, you can never have enough art supplies. I mean, you know. Yeah, I have a lot of art kits. I have, like, six art kits. So, like, I need, like, more coloring books and stuff. Do you draw, too? Yes. Yeah. You draw with pen colored pens or with uh, pencils? Um, it's a mix. I use colored pencils a lot. And I use crayons and markers. For Christmas, my mom, she actually printed out some coloring papers for Christmas. Yeah. And I would use, like, a whole bunch of crayon and color pencil because I left my markers at school. Oh, oh, during school break? During winter break, so you didn't have any? <laughs> yeah. I could see that being a problem. But I still made it work, though. And other things you could do with your, your top hat here is you could, uh, after you put your base coat on, you could actually put a pattern in it. Um, And if you didn't want to print your pattern, uh, paint the pattern, you could actually cut some uh, uh, scrapbooking paper and glue that on to your hat. Okay. And so, like, this is an example, because I was showing her a while ago. Do you see this, this little guy here? Yeah. Isn't he adorable? But see this and this? This is all scrapbook paper. Didn't have to paint it. Looks pretty cool. Okay. After you paint your hat and your arms, we've got to paint this is the brim of the hat. So we're going to paint it too. And again, you can paint it a contrasting color or contrasting or coordinating color for your hat. Yeah, I'm doing a pink hat. Oh, we went to pink. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the top of the hat could be one shade of pink, and the brim could be another shade of pink. I only have one shade. Oh, okay. Well, if you ever do another one, you could do it that way. Yeah. Or, you know what? You could paint over it if you ever get another color. Yeah. Because we talked about that, right? Yeah. I, I would make the brim the, the darker pink, though, because you've already, you're trying to get over that black. So I would make it the darker pink. Okay. I did not bring any water. I like to have, in my art supplies, I like to have some wet ones handy. And because of these wet ones, you can use them. Oh, there's her picture. The wet ones, you can actually use them to... Uh, Keep your uh, brushes moist as well. Okay. And another thing, if you're working on a project, you can also put your paintbrush in a baggie. 
and that will keep your uh, your brushes good. So it's like if you wanted to go back and do your white without you know going to rinse your brushes out. All right, so where where are we at now? What do you want to do now? You want to do the red for the heart and the berries? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. So we and the hat, the the ho ho hat. So we've got the Santa hat and the heart and the berries. You see all those? So those we're gonna paint red real quick. If I can get my red open. Okay. Just gonna move some of my stuff over. Yeah. So Run that around quick, don't you? So is it these two right here? Yep. Yeah. And then uh, the hat. And you got you already got the hat. Okay. I'm gonna sand my heart. Okay. Um, can I make my, um, berries have, like, texture, since they do have texture in real life? Yes, yes, you can. How are you going to do that? Are you going to use your Q-tip, or are you just going to dab with your brush? Q-tip. Okay. Kind of look like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> now, when we get ready to do our tree, and then our this, of course, be our berry leaves. If you wanted to make your berry leaves a darker green, and then your trees another shade of green. Okay. That's something else we could do, but I only brought one green, so mine are all going to be the same color. But you know what a kid do? Add just a little bit. Do you ever mix your colors? Make your own well, colors? Add some white to it to make it a lighter. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to add a little black to mine because I want it to be just a little bit darker on my... Uh, I want it to be a little bit darker on my berry leaves. Yeah, if I had my paint palette, I would mix some colors around. I actually learned that in art class this year. Yeah. You can use colors and you can mix them up to make different colors. Well, the, the only thing is, when you mix your own colors, you better make sure you've mixed enough. Because you get to the, you get to the very end and, you know, oh my gosh, I needed just a little bit more of that color. Yeah, that you're supposed to do your lighter ones first, so then you don't have to go back and keep adding it, because you're going to have to add a lot of light stuff. Yep. That is true. Okay, I couldn't get... Oh, oh there's my color. I want right there. There's my color. See, I'm using my paper plate for uh, to mix my colors. Yeah, I have like a teal color. Yeah. I think I might do some teal. Teal is teal. good. Be careful if you are painting over your snowman because you don't want some splatter. You moved your pieces. Because yeah. see how I'm just kind of confined here and I have to be careful that I don't, when I'm painting, I don't splatter on my uh, snowman. 
Yeah. I don't want my... Snowman's on the other side of the table. Alright, that's a safe place for him. Yeah. Oh, this is like a light green. I've got, mine's called Christmas green, but it's a light green. It's, I would think Christmas green's a little bit darker in my mind, but. I just love to mix colors around. Gives me something to do and some things I didn't know I get to learn about colors. See, I took I took this green, it's kind of light, and I added a little black and a little um, added a little black and a little red to it. Give it a little red tint to it, so it's going to be a little bit darker than my trees, so it doesn't all look the same. All right, so green is going to be we've got our. I think that's going to show up. And now I'm going to paint my trees. Yeah, I'm going to use my lighter one. For your trees? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, are we going to call her, um, uh, the little guy's hat? The, the top of the, the Santa hat? Uh, no. Which, um, which means, show me the piece. Okay. Where is it? Yes, except you want to use the other side. The cleaner side. Yes, I, I made mine red. Hold on. This one, I'm going to use a Q-tip. Hold on one. Hold on one second. Be right back. Okay. Yeah, I'm in my. I'm in, I'm in my Zoom class. Sorry, that was my that's my daughter in law and anytime she calls I'm like, Oh, is it about my grandsons? So I had to catch it. Because I they call me super grandma. Like, do I need to go run and get them? Do I need to do something? So now are you gonna paint your trees? Uh, both the same shade of green. I did because uh, they're the same type of tree. Yeah. But uh, you. Yeah, so. But you know, you could have like a Dr. Seuss or something or a Grinch tree, and it could be any color. Because it's a wonderful thing about when you make your own projects it's your creativity that shines yeah yeah so what i did is i used my q-tips to like make little lines and then I'm gonna add like some red dots, I think. Okay. Have you ever used have you ever done the splattering technique? Yes. Okay, so that would be one of the things we could do instead of making the dots on the tree here. You could actually splatter your white so it looks like it's little pieces of snow instead of snowballs on the on your tree here. Well, that's another technique we could do. The thing about splattering is it gets practice, practice on your paper plate until you get it just the way you want it to be and then put it on your project. Because you don't want a big old glob on there. So that's how we would do our, our splattering. 
I think that would look cute on the on the tree. The only thing I would do it, but I don't want to because I don't want to get it all over my mom's computer. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. So let's well, stick to our. Uh, then, yeah. Or yeah, let's stick to our. Uh, let's stick to our cute tip. Technique for that. Okay, where's the paint at? Way down there. There it goes. Are you going to add bulbs onto your tree? Um, I'm not going to add to my tree. I just used the. You could also take another technique we could do if you wanted to. Is instead of the dots like we because we're going to make our dots with our Q-tip. But instead, we could do some shading so it just looks like a little bit of snow is on each branch. Oh, yeah. I did that before. Yeah. I so we could. Doing it, but then. I yeah. That might take a little bit longer. So we could do that. All right. Are your trees all done? Just um, about? I... Almost. Okay. I think the only thing we've got left to paint before we start doing some other things is the nose. The carrot. The two carrots. I'm missing the nose. Okay, there's my other nose. Oh, is one like a straight, just like straight triangle? Yeah. That's one's a crooked carrot and one is a uh, just a little triangle. There's a brush. I'm wanting Michaels or somebody to put their paintbrushes on sale. I want to go buy some new paintbrushes. I think mine have about had it. I saw all those paintbrushes. They looked good. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Mine, mine are looking a little sad. <laughs> Look at Sometimes I take uh, the ends are soft, sprawled out, you know, because I'd be daubing or something. So I'll just take the scissors and kind of cut the bristles down a little bit, try to get a straighter edge. Now my trees are all done. All right. I am painting my carrots right now. Let me move my phone. Okay. The big snowman, that one's a big one. He <laughs> the big house. I don't know if you've got this in your kit or not, in your art supplies, but no. these are just from the Dollar uh, the Dollar Tree. I think you get three in a package. And I just have water in it so that I can spray what I'm working on because maybe I want to, I just refresh my brushes over here because I have them in that baby wipe or that uh, wet one. So I just refreshed them a little bit so they'll stay damp because I haven't washed them. You can also take this and spray it on your wood and then have like a wash. Instead of it being bright green, we could put a little water in it and we could, you know, put it in so it looks more like a stain or a wash. Like so, a water um, color? do what? So, like this? Is this what you mean? Yes, more of a wash like that. Uh huh. 
And we can we can do that also with the with using wet ones where we've painted and we're like, oh, I want that to have a little bit more of a look, you know, maybe a rustic look to it or something or a vintage look. And I can take these wet ones and pull paint off as well. So. So then are we going to, this the only thing that we really have left is the, are we going to paint the arms? Uh, the big arms? No, I, oh, I meant like the smaller ones. Yes, you should paint those too. Okay. Now, do you have your, do you have glue? Yes. Okay, all right. My glue. So let me know when everything is painted, and we're going to do some accent pieces. We'll do, do some you accents. Do big one right now? Um, no, we're going to do, you can do that one when we're through, okay? Because okay. this way we can get our stuff done, and then you can finish up. And then another thing you can do, if you see a spot, like, see how on my, I don't know if you can see. Do you see how on my button, I miss a little spot there? You can go back and do that as well when we're through. But we want to we want to work on um, doing some accents. Let's see if I can get this out of the way. All right. All right, I'm going to take my uh, holly leaves, and I have a paint marker. Oh, are those pasties, uh, pastas? Yes, you know those, huh? Yeah. Yeah. They're nice. I like them. Do you have some? No. No. Uh, well, save up your birthday money. Yeah. Buy you some. I like these. Oops. But I'm going to take these and I want to just put the vein, just a slight... I don't know how to get it closed up on here. This is this is kind of a new setup for me. All right, I'm going to take my marker, and I'm going to try to just get a little vein in here. So I'm going to practice on my plate. Oh, that's too heavy. I want it really light. So that's why I use my little paper plate or my paper towel, and I just want a light mark. So I'm going to take and just do a light mark through here. And that was a little too much, so I'm going to just kind of wipe it off a little bit. Same thing here. And I just want this vein going on down here. And so I was able to smudge them up a little bit so they weren't just flat in your face. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Didn't want it to be, oh, all I see is that yellow. And I want it to blend in. So remember how I told you I like to paint with my fingers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Paint with our fingers. You know, you get to be an old lady and you're still painting with your fingers. Hi. Right. Did you go get a supply? Huh? Did you go get some more supplies? Your markers? Okay. So you could use a white marker, you could use a light brown, you could use yellow, something that's just going to have a little bit of look to it. If you use your white, be really thin with it. Make You want a fine line. All right. Do you put your lines in? Yep, I'm doing it right now. Okay. Now. All right. Okay. Let me know when you're ready to go on. We're going to put some little dots on our berries. Okay. Oops. All right. So now I'm going to take my toothpick.
And on each part, I'm a little berry. I'm going to put a little, uh, barely touch on there. Oh, is it going to be like a highlight? Yep. Okay. You can either do a, a flourish, which is just, you know, a line that's thick on one end and thin on the other end. You could do a flourish. You could do some dots. And that's, I'm doing dots with my toothpick. For my berries. Just want a little subtle look. Okay. Now if you see on this one, I didn't, I'm not really like those. So remember how we said, if we don't like it, what are we going to do? We're going to paint over it. Yeah. So I'm just going to get my red paint right over. See, now they're gone. And <laughs> when that dries, when that red dries, because if I try to put some white on that red wet, I'm going to have white pink. So when that dries, I'm going to go back and put some more little dots on there. And then that piece, the berry piece, is just going to be glued on top of our holly leaves. Put our holly berry on our holly leaves. Kind of looks like Mickey Mouse if you're doing that way, doesn't he? Have you been to Disneyland? Uh, no. Well, there's hope for you. I went, the first time I went, I was uh, 60. So, I'm 60 years old the first time I went to Disney. So, you got plenty of time. I'm going to call my mom down to help me with the glue. Okay. Are we going to glue? Are we going to glue or are we going to do it like, oh, you got your glue? Okay. Now, for your glue, which kind, what kind do you have? Let me see it. Hold it up to me. Gorilla glue. Ooh, you got the good stuff. Okay, now, we, what we want to do is, do you see, look at my screen. Tweety, look at your screen. Do you see our little bit, our little berries here? Yeah. I just want... A little bitty bit like that's even too much so not only do I paint with my fingers I glue with my fingers because I don't want that smearing out everywhere all right so when you get your glue on get your paper towel and take some off if you need to okay. don't be like me and have glue all over your clothes or paint all over your clothes all my clothes have glue and paint on them And then that's our first piece we got completed. So as soon as this dries, I'm going to put a few more um, dots on my berry. Okay. Are you all glued up? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and keep working uh, on the hat area. So remember how we've got this piece? That's our brim. Yep. Okay. Yep. So again, this is your guy. So you can make him go across. You can make him go across like this. You can make it a little cockeyed going this way. You can put it further out this way. So before you glue, play with it a little bit and see what personality your snowman's going to have. Where does that brim need to be? Okay. So I think my snowman has, I think he feels about like that.
I found the way I want it. Okay. All right. We'll glue it on there. And the same thing for your berries. Okay. How do you want the berries sitting on there? And be careful, make sure you know how your berry leaves are going on there because you only want to glue the part that's going to land yeah, on his hat. Yeah. But you know what? It's glue. You can just wipe it off if you've got some in the wrong spot. Yeah, I like it. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. My poor old fella, he looks plain. Jane, yours looks just like cruising. All right. Now, I took my... Let me take my snowman apart here. Okay. Uh-oh. Where did my picture go? So I don't know if I'm... Uh, there I go. Okay. Now, do you see how I took some little snow and put this... I've got some more little dots. Okay. You can do it that way. We can do it to where we are maybe shading part of the top. I like this. I like this look. So I'm going to make mine like this again. And here's how I did it. I got some different paint brushes that have some round bottoms. Okay. And they've got different sizes. Like this one is small. And see how this one is bigger? Yeah. And that's what I did. And I think I've got another really small one somewhere. Looks like I've used you before. So that's what I'm going to go with. And again, I'm going to practice on my paper plate. Make sure I don't have too much. And you don't have to reload the end of the brush each time. Try to, you can get some more off of what you're doing. So I'm going to hold. And I'll use this littler one. Paint on there. I'm making, I've got some here. I want it to be a little more solid and a little bigger. So I'm kind of going back over them and making them a little more solid. And then I've got these little, little flecks of snow all around there. What I'm doing is like, I'm like doing, using my Q-tip. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to little dots to make it look like there was snow on there. Okay. Very good. Okay. Oh, we're going to have to work a little faster because we're going to run out of our time here. All right, while you're working on that, then I would say that the next thing, the next thing we're going to do is... Um, Put his nose where you think his nose should go. Okay, so I've got my nose. It could be a pointy more up this way. Because then we're going to do our eyes. And I am going to find me a flatter brush. Here we go. Maybe this one will work. I'm going to use... 
this one. No, not even this one. I'm trying to find the. Ah, there we go. This is the one I want. So for my eyes, I did not draw those circles. I again used my paintbrush tip. I'm not gluing my nose down yet, but I'm going to put my eyeballs on here. And then I'm going to add a little bit. It depends. Do you want him to have the big eyeballs or do you want him to have beady little eyes? Because, you know, those eyes make the difference. And change his whole shape or his whole personality is what I really wanted to say there. I need some more black. So when I put my paintbrush, tip of my paintbrush on here, and if I want that eye to be bigger, I'm just going out again with the next set of paint. And then I'm trying to just put it all together and make it my circle for my eye. Yeah, that's what I did. But my black was dried out, so I just added a little bit of water, so then it might okay. add, like some watercolor eyes. Okay. All right. And then I did the same thing for my mouth, where I actually took a, a bigger, a smaller, bigger, smaller, you know, in, in through there. So, but we're not going to paint that right now, because like I said, we're, we're running out of time. So that's how I did my mouth. I still did with my uh, different paintbrush tip sizes on my buttons after I glued the buttons on my snowman we're going to pretend they're glued on there I again took a toothpick and put a little snow on those but what you could do with those is take see how this works you could take your uh And just put, see, I just barely ran my brush over this. And now I've got a little flourish going on that actually looks like some snow instead of the dots. Do you see how it is? Doing a little shadowing of a sort. Yeah. See, I need some new brushes because mine are all spread out. That was not going to work. Okay, now another technique you could do that looks like snow. is like the flourish that we did here where we have just a little thick on one end and thinner at the top but what we're going to do here on this button what we're going to do on this button is we're going to barely have paint on here where our brush is almost dry okay and then we're just going to push around some snow see how we just did that we just push around some snow we could do this on his nose as well the top of his nose I just stuck my finger in my eyeball. Oh, now he looks like a scare. Woo. See how I told you that the eyeballs can make it such a difference? Do you see how I stuck my finger in the eye and now it's kind of tilted up here? Now he looks like a scary snowman. It's just the eyes are so different. Anyway, if you take your... Uh, I'm going to take some white. And again, I'm gonna. it's going to be dry. And I'm going to brush some snow... Using my fingers too. I'm just going to brush some snow on the peaks of his nose. Okay. So he looks like he's got a little shadowing going on here. On the orange of his nose. That's where the snow would land at the tops here. So it's going to be like a, a peak in valleys. And then... I'm just smooth it out. So now his nose has a little snow as well.
And then we're going to do the same thing for our little snowman that we just did on the big one. We're going to do his eyes and his little uh, cold pieces for his mouth. And then you will actually, when you're through, you will actually put his hands on here and that heart. The hand will be holding the hearts. Okay. okay. What I did with my snow drift, and you can do two, I mean, just a couple of different things you could do is I took some gray, and again, I dotted the peaks. Okay, so I dotted the peaks. But or you could do, you could do dot, dot, and a flourish, and a dot, dot, and a flourish on this as well. And then on my trees, I got my two my Q-tip again, which I've let me get another one because I just stuck that in the green paint. That's not a that's a toothpick. Q-tip. Okay. So I'm going with the uh, balls, snowballs on my tree. And I'm just going to, I'm putting down and lifting up and putting down and lifting up. And that's how we're going to build. And then we're just going to keep building our paint on top of it so it'll have that texture to it. So it, it won't be so flat. So it actually look like it's snow. And then splatter if we wanted to. I can try not to splatter all over everything. I'm afraid I'm going to get it all over my keyboard and stuff. Um, we could splatter as well. Uh, you could also do, I don't know if you can see or not, you could also do a little shading here where now you've got just some snow on the, uh, on the limbs here. So all we did was just shade this little area. R. There's another color. We could take our marker and we could do a dot, dot, and a flourish up through here. So we got several things we could do. We could do our texture with our Q-tip and we just keep building our paint on top with the Q-tip. We could do a little shadowing here that looks like there's just snow laying on the limbs. Or we could take our paint marker or a fine brush and do our dot dot in a little flourish on the side. See, so we got three different things we could do here. And then, of course, uh, when you've got more surface area, you could do your splatter as well. Okay? Okay. So you've got your. Uh, You've got your picture, right? So you know how to glue it together. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. I saw your picture somewhere. So you know how to glue it together. If you want to go back after your uh, the fuzz, the furry stuff on your hat, if you want to go back and build some more texture on top of that, you you can do that as well. You could put some of the techniques we talked about, the shadowing or the snow. You could put on the little nose as well. Okay. okay. When you put it together on your big piece, okay, okay, the snowman goes on the back. The back being is the closest to the edge here. So the snowman goes in the back, and then your snow drift goes in the front one. All right. What you could also do on yours, you could put your name, you could write your name on the snow drift here, this big, the big piece, and date it if you wanted to. You could put warm winter wishes, you could write that on there. 
So, I said, it's yours. You make it how you want it to be, okay? So, and then I just took some ribbon, any color ribbon that I thought was coordinating, and I just tied it around their neck to give them a little bit more pizzazz. But you could use uh, any other kind of fabric that you wanted to. You could get a, a some uh, braided, some braided ribbon if you wanted to put it on there. You could get uh, oh shiny glittery ribbon if you wanted. Oh, that'd be good with your pink hat. Some glittery ribbon. Yeah. That would be good on there as well. Okay, so we've been on our for our hour. Do you have any questions before we go, before I go, before I leave you? I will miss you. So, uh, send me a picture of him when he's through, okay? Okay. You can get that probably from your mom or something, my email address, and send me a picture so I can see what he looks like. Okay. That sound good? Yep. All right, anything else? You got it? I do want to see him when he's finished. Okay. Or when they are finished. Boy, I'm telling you, this eyeball, he looks like one scary. <laughs> he looks like one scary snowman. I'm going to have to fix that because he's kind of scary. Oh, you know what else you could put on your heart? You could put your initials or your mom's initials or, you know. Mom's. And uh, you could put that on there, too, with one of your markers. Okay. So it is your snow pals. So you make them how you want to. And if you don't like it, paint over and start all over, okay? Okay. All right. Thanks for spending the evening with me. Yep. Thanks so much, Tracy. <laughs> well, thank you, Christine. I enjoyed my evening. Is there anything else I could add to, say to, or need to do? Nope, you are all set. All right. Thank you all. Thanks. Have a good night. Bye-bye.